I'm Lynette Zhang, Chief Market Analyst here at ITM Trading, a full-service physical gold and silver dealer specializing in custom strategies to help you survive and thrive the reset that should be pretty clear to everybody has already begun. And today we're going to do the Q and A's. So I'm just gonna jump right into it. Steve S asks, chances of lopping off zeros? What are the odds that we wake up one day and any greenbacks we're holding in hand are worth only a fraction of their value from the prior day? Well, I think that's a pretty good chance. I don't think it's a good chance today because we need more of those zeros to add on but look at what the global central bankers are doing. They will, those zeros will be going on. And you know, this reminds me so much of when um, years ago, when, when did we go there, Megan? 2008, 2009. Uh, and we were fortunate enough be, to be able to go to Hungary, Austria, and the Czech Republic. And you know, I, me, I'm always busy, so I wasn't really thinking about it. And I ordered the currencies from each one of those currencies, uh, countries, though I could have just ordered euros and that would have worked. But I was just busy, I didn't think about it. So when those currencies came in, in Florence, which is the Hungarian currency, I did like 2,500, because things seemed cheaper to me there. And the stack was like, I mean, it could choke a horse, the stack of bills that came in. On the other hand, in Austria, where it was just euros, that stack was yeah, probably about like that big. And it was just a little bit bigger in the Czech Republic, but the big one was hungry. And I said to myself, hmm, they have to be experiencing a lot of inflation. So when we go there, I think we got a pack of gum or something like that. It was something like 1,200 forints or something like that. But what was also particularly interesting about that period of time, number one, you know, I always, when I would travel to Europe and I couldn't speak the language, I hire a guide so that they can interpret and that gives me an opportunity, much to my children's chagrin, frankly, to ask a lot of questions. And, you know, when I said, wow, inflation must, must be running pretty high here now. And the response that I got was so interesting because people were basically, no, it's, no, it's not so bad. Yes, it is bad. You know, people marry the legal money of the state and they can't believe that that money could go away, but it does. So lopping off zeros, absolutely. When those zeros get big enough, they will be lopped off and the odds that we wake up one day and any greenbacks we're holding are worth only a fraction of their value for the prior day, Truthfully, think about inflation. Think about food inflation right now. Think about all of the disruptions in the supply chain. If you went to the grocery store and you bought, you know, a piece of meat at $10 last week and you go back today and now it's like $15 or $20, your currency has lost a lot of value, no matter what they blame it on. When the hyperinflation kicks into gear, and it will. So far, it's being contained in the stock markets and in the bond markets. They sit there and go, well, hmm, we haven't had much of inflation. Well, look at your cost of living to 2008 to today. Hasn't that gone up? Yes, it has. Yes, it has. So the difference between inflation and hyperinflation is the speed. That's it. The outcome is the same. Loss of purchasing power, and they've been doing it to us forever. Uh, and Stephen P. asks, is there a functional difference between precious metals stored in a private vault and precious metals held in allocated accounts? Don't they both assume a counterparty risk? Yes, they both do. Because if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And what Stephen P is referring to here is whether it's specifically allocated and segregated in your name in that vault versus put in with everybody else's 
and there's no differentiation. Just that on a ledger it says you have X, whatever you have. But you make a very good point here, Stephen, because both of them run counterparty risk simply because you're not holding them. Now, I'm not saying that they're going to steal them, but it is a whole lot easier to confiscate them. Just saying. And O. Anton asks, should one look at platinum? Is it good, bad, and different? It is cheaper than gold at about two to one, and it used to be at least one to one, if not more. And actually, platinum used to trade a lot higher than gold. But platinum is an industrial metal. So going into a global, you know, depression, which is what we're in, then platinum is not likely to perform, and that's why you see that difference. Uh, and gold and silver are monetary metals. This is a currency life cycle issue. I'm going to repeat that, sorry. This is a currency life cycle issue. So for me personally, my focus in precious metals, without a, a doubt, is in gold and silver. Um, I used to have platinum before when it first when it first went uh, started trading cheaper than gold, and I figured, all right, so down the road we can turn it into jewelry or something like that. So it isn't that I don't like platinum; it is more rare than gold is. However, it is not a currency metal. It is an industrial metal. And uh, Bad Moon Rising asks, what the heck do you mean by dry powder? Oh, okay. Well, dry powder is like having something put here so that when you want to, when you want to take advantage of, say, real estate, when real estate super tanks, it's not yet. But when real estate super tanks, well, then you've got something to work with. So that's when you hear somebody say dry powder, it's sitting over here. You don't really have to do anything with it. It's just available to you when you want to use it. And that was, okay. And LS asks, what's a good sign we should settle, sell our metals and buy real estate? Great question. Uh, I, yesterday, I just you just saw the cup formation in gold, right? So these are the kinds of formations when we see that on real estate, that's going to tell us when we're somewhere near a bottom and we, we, we don't want to buy it on the way down. We want to wait until there's a leveling off and then a moving up that could indicate that we are have turned the corner. Remember, you know, anybody knows, this is so simple. You know when there is a positive trend because when you look on the chart, you will see a series of higher and higher lows. So first, we're going to let it go down to a bottom. Then we're going to watch that trading range and watch it level off. Then we're going to start to see higher and higher lows. That's the point when I'm going to want to take some of my gains in gold. And this is for speculation and go into and start to buy those other asset producing instruments. And that's also so real estate or rights or things like that, whatever is going to give you some passive income. That's what we're going to look for. Now, um, having said that, keep in mind, we need to have a place to make a last stand. So that kind of changes everything. But when is the best time to do it? When you can see the big money moving into there. And uh, we had some questions that I didn't get to yesterday. So should I buy Brutha? Oh, Dumbian asks, should I buy Silver Eagle coins? Yes, you should buy Silver Eagle, Silver Rounds, pre-65 silver, dimes, quarters, half dollars, dollars. You should buy any silver that you could get your hands on and any gold that you can get your hands on. So yes, I own Silver Eagles. I own Philharmonics, which personally I think are the prettiest ones, but they're an ounce of silver. It doesn't matter. Yes, you should. And uh, 11 above asks, why would a gold standard make the price rise? 
It's not that a gold standard would make the price of gold rise. It is when they have to reset the value of the currency, remove whatever little bit of confidence and value is left. They reset that against gold. When a currency is on a gold standard, then it creates restrictions around what governments can do. That's why they don't like the gold standard. But that's also why I tell you that, um, you know, there are some people that think, well, China's going to back their currency with gold. As soon as they would do that, wherever that debt level sits, that's where it remains. This debt globally, and even in individual countries, it's not payable. It's not payable. So personally, I do, they cannot, I, I do not believe that they can back a currency with gold until they hyperinflate the debt away. Inflation is good for governments, and in some ways, in some ways is very bad for individuals. Other ways it's kind of good for individuals because it makes the debt easier to service if you have fixed rate debt. And if you think about when you bought your first home and it seemed like a lot of money that you were committing to, but then over time, as your wages inflated, so you made more money, it was easier to service that. So just keep all of that in mind. I am not telling you to do anything right now. Debt is very, very cheap. You just have to be super careful about variable rate debt. And any debt you take on, you want to absolutely, well, this is my opinion. This is how I feel about it. Any debt that I would take on, make 100% certain that I had enough gold over here to repay that debt when it was off you know, the right time to do it. So after, as the reset is occurring, when the official reset occurs, then you're going to want to take that, repay that fixed rate debt. Get out of variable rate debt. That'll kill you. The fixed rate debt, it's going to be, you're going to be paying it back with dollars in this country anyway that have no value. So that's it for today. We do have gold and silver, and frankly, with what's happening in those markets, the cheapest opportunity to buy them may well be behind us. Remember when we broke out, if you looked on the graph, we saw that 1890 was a bottom, so or new support level on the bottom, I should say. It's more accurate. So just Keep paying attention. I know it's really fun, and it is, even for me, when we see spot gold and spot silver running, we love that. But just remember that there are traders in these markets. So to see it bounce along the way is absolutely normal. And uh, by the way, too, you'll notice yesterday that uh, I, I, caught, I captured audio from an interview on gold and silver. And I've been saying that I think we'll see 2,500 pretty quickly once it breaks out, and which it has now done. Well, now we'll see whether or not I'm right or I'm wrong. But pundits on Wall Street are also calling for that number. That still does not reflect its fundamental value. So do not be fooled by that. Right now, it is somewhere north of 11,500. So even at 2,000, 2,500, 10,000, it's a bargain. Give us a call, 888-696-4653. If you don't have your strategy yet, you don't have your plan for walking through it, we got a little taste. Get that plan done. And if you like this, share it. Please give us a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that button. We'll let you know when we're going live or when we're posting things. And uh, until next we meet, Please be safe out there. Bye-bye.